Get ready to be inspired by a Florida family with a David and Goliath style story that has a surprise ending. I'm Linda Satgas with FamilyHistoryHero.com and this is part three of my interview with Thomas Allen Harris, host of the PBS television series called Family Pictures USA. I, I want to hear some of your favorite times going around the USA, some of the stories that stand out to you personally mm -hmm. um, that are maybe funny or um, just maybe inspiring or something that stands out to you. Give, give us a few stories. Okay, so first off, I will say that the, um, the production is uh, not like other productions. It's very unusual. The closest it comes to is like StoryCorps because we invite hundreds of people to come and share their family albums. And we have a triage space where people can lay their images out on the table and we help select which ones they're gonna share. And um, so people in that moment, in that, in that triage space, cousins find one another, oh you know, old God. friends come in contact, you know, people look at the table and they're like, oh, I have a picture that's similar. I think it was taken in the same studio, you know, so they find all these overlaps. And um, so that is, you know, in and of itself, pretty amazing. And we're releasing some of that material on Instagram and, and Facebook. But in the, in the, in the show itself, one story, um, I mean, there's so many different stories. Every story that we feature is like, you know, so special and so heartwarming yeah. and, and funny as well. But there's one story I'll share, um, and it's a story that takes place in Southwest Florida. And it features um, a, a woman by the name of, I believe her name is uh, Cynthia Williams. And her dad um, used to fish in Estero Bay, which is this sublime kind of paradise, you know, um, and is the same way it was like 50, 60, 70 years ago. But 60, 50 or 60, 70 years ago, her dad was also a developer and he had the idea to turn Estero Bay into um, a kind of a uh, Fort Lauderdale or Orlando, you know, like, a, a, you know, develop it and make a lot of money. And there are two uh, people, a young couple then, who were fisher people, fishermen and his wife. And, um, and they fought them. And they, be, they, in their fight, they established the first um, kind of um, environmental kind of movement, you know, in America, you know? Um, and so, um, at, you know, in, at, around um, the, uh, the fish, maintaining um, the bay and fishing areas. And so, um, so they fought them and they won. It's like a David and Goliath story because her dad had, had all the lawyers and the money and they, all they had was their organizing. And so they're now in their 90s. And so she said, I would like to say something to them. I'd like to thank them for you know for fighting that good fight and even though it cost my family billions of dollars if they had if my dad had won it this area would not be you know it would, not, it would have lost its beauty and its charm and you know all the things i love about it and so mm -hmm. i brought them together and they were shocked this 90 year old couple oh, wow. who were former activists you know like you know unwitting i mean they didn't they didn't plan to become activists but they were fighting for their way of life and um and so they were shocked to meet the daughter of, of this guy who they had battled with yeah. and, to, and to learn that she didn't have, you know, any resentments towards them. Mm. And the man who was going to build it, the development called it, he was going to build a city the size of Fort Lauderdale and it would just take up almost all of the bay. I have a surprise for you two, mm -hmm. Cynthia Williams. Yes. I wanted to meet you both and let you know that my father was Barry C. Williams. <gasps> oh my goodness! <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> Barry yeah. C. Williams, you're his, you're his daughter. Yes, I know you probably don't know I existed, but I do, and I want you to know <laughs> that above anything else, I want you to know how much how grateful I am to yeah. you for stopping Daddy and all of his yeah. gang from oh. devastating oh. Estero Bay. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. That's well, wonderful. I'm so yeah. glad to meet you and know that you don't resent what we oh, did. Of course not. It yeah. costs us a few million dollars, but uh, you know. <laughs> no. well, well, I'm so glad that you all came together and you had this opportunity yeah. to 
reunite. Thank you for yeah. saving Astero Bay and yeah. just setting a precedent mm -hmm. around the country. There's no way anyone can thank you adequately for what you did. Oh, no. Could I shake your hand? Of course. It's so good to meet you and, and know that everything's okay. Yeah. If you're watching this right now, you need to go watch that because it's the one on Florida. Mm -hmm. And um, there are a lot of great stories in there, too. There's some other great stories. I, I loved watching that episode. So we'll, we'll just throw that out. You, you've got now a little taste of it, but you got to go see it, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And there are amazing stories like that. I mean, the other thing in a kind of general sense is the, um, the realization that, you know, family is, you know, is blood, but it's also beyond blood. It's the people who have kept our ancestors alive, their families that have been friends for generations, who we care about, you know, the family that's in our heart, in addition to, you know, whose genes we share. And, um, and so that was an example of that. And then there was another example in the same episode of uh, an African-American woman and a uh, former uh, white Southerner who realized that they were kin, you know, and they shared a great grandfather. And they found each other, you know, because of the name and, um, and the story. So what is your relation between the three of you? We're cousins. We're cousins. All three of your cousins. <laughs> yes. Cassandra's search for Nelson's history leads to a reunion that unites two branches of the Tillis family, confirmed by a DNA test. Who's the common ancestor here? This right here is Willoughby Tillis. Willoughby is the brother to my great-great-grandfather, and he's also Nelson's daddy, Nelson Tillis, which is their great-great-grandfather. I was wondering who these other people are in this photograph, and do you know? I know this one right here. That's James Dallas, and he was one of the sons of Willoughby. Wow. So he was half-brother. He was half-brother to Nelson. Grandfather. Yes. yes. Would they have acknowledged that connection? That's a question that we're trying to answer. Right. We don't know. This, to me, looks like Willoughby, but I'm not sure. So this is almost a family photograph. Oh I would think it'd be close to it. Willoughby had quite a few sons, so it could be. Wait a minute. That's a picture maybe of all our uncles? Could be. Wow. I'm telling you. <laughs> This picture right here really kind of brings it full circle. Yeah. We had a memorial service, and it was just nice for all of us to be together mm -hmm. at the graves of our grandfather. Connecting with our family allowed us to move forward, to find out that we had family, and um, they and love us. a family us. that loves you, yeah. too. Yeah. That's what's in here. That's right. And in here. here. Oops. <laughs> I think there's more that if we really look, that bring, will bring us together, then tear us apart. These are my cousins, and I love them. And, and they love me. Yeah. I think it's a powerful testimony of just the resilience of the human spirit. The ties that bind us, the ties of blood, community, all those things still exist today. And the fact that we were able to reach back over 100 years and still pull those positive elements out. Justice, love, humanity, those are the things that this teaches us. You know, that is a good segue into the question that I wanted to ask you, um, and that's about some insights that you've learned about how much we have in common Right now, it seems like there are a lot of differences and bad news and, you know, so, so throw us a bone, give us hope <laughs> that we can change by learning what our, our um, commonality is. So, yeah, I'd like you to address that. Yeah, thank you, Linda. So, I mean, when you, I mean, I've, I've spoken to over 4,000 people about their family albums. So, you know, I put in those hours <laughs> and... I mean, what one sees is the commonality of family and love and hard work. 
and shared values, you know, particularly amongst Americans, you know, and, um, and how similar our stories are. You know, I think that in the media and the kind of more dominant narratives of history, you know, people get siloed, you know, and, you know, there's a, a lot of discussion right now in corporations, how do we break open the silos so that, you know, um, this department speaks with that department and they come together and they become more productive. Well, the same is true with this, our country, you know, we're kind of in these silos, you know, people live in different areas and, you know, whether it's you know, around race or religion or, you know, economics, um, economic classes. And I think that, you know, if we begin to understand and see one another, not simply in our superficial attributes, mm -hmm. but see one another at, in, through um, the connections that we have with our own family. So mm -hmm. oh, that, that's the daughter of so-and-so, that's the son of so-and-so, and, -so. and you know, I could understand that person, I could, you know, we have these things in common, you know, then I think we begin to become a little bit more um, compassionate and mm -hmm. empathetic and also we see connections that we might have missed otherwise you know because you know you go back in anyone's dna and who knows what you're going to find or you go back in anyone's you know story and you know in terms of migration and so i think that what we're trying to do is is kind of ground us in um not simply the the, the kind of history of uh, the famous people who are super wealthy, but the common person, kind of like what Howard Zen talks about, a people's history of America, and, you know, realize that within our communities are all these heroes, you know, and that's why I love your show, you know, History Heroes, because, you know, it's all these unsung heroes is, are, are the people that really speak to me, you know, and give me inspiration that, you know, I don't have to be elected president to make change or a governor or mayor, you know, that I can start where I am and, um, and in my community. And so I think that those stories are really there in people's family albums. This has been part three of my interview with Thomas Allen Harris. In part four, we'll see how a cowboy passes the love and pride he has for his way of life down to his grandkids. And Thomas will share two great ways to approach telling a family story. This is Linda Satgast with FamilyHistoryHero.com, where we show you how to turn your dusty old boxes of family photos into easy to share family stories.